How do, you, how do you propose to incorporate protest sites, as Jane Jacobs would have appreciated, into the cities that, that we're building? Um, we have this issue. Where do you go for a discussion about the 99%, 1%, or about any of the things we're talking about? Well, I think this is what I was saying, that you know, the city is like this jungle where the buildings are like the vines, and it's like to get these public spaces, you have to clear them out and really design for them and plan for them. So. I think that you know, as we're developing new parts of the city or even existing parts of the city, we have to create these spaces. Well, I think there are spaces that are there that are like, you know, at uh, 23rd Street. There's this whole area that's been because of the change of you know closing down part of the street. There's this, mm. and it's just it's being used in a strange way. I mean. Uh, it could function better as a public space. I just see these spaces that are appearing all over the city uh, as the bike lanes have gone in, mm -hmm. and it seems like they could be used in so much better a way. I mean, because Roberta Graz has talked about public space as a manifestation of democracy, right? Of democracy's need for a place of, with people of different opinions to engage in unplanned activities, I think is how she puts it. But it, it, to we me, have it's, it's not incidental that, that Zuccotti Park was uh, was private, and that's how <laughs> they could do it. Because if it had been public, the police could have come in, you know, when the sun went down, and say, "Get out of here," and they would have had the right to do it. The fact that it was private absolutely mattered. And I think I have less faith that we can design the public space that will want protest. I think our government doesn't want us to protest, and we'll make sure that we don't do that. Well, and there's something about um, I think what you're what you're getting at too is that, and I think of this about theaters and, and other designated places. Like there, there's a time in which we want those, that designated space, that space that's made for something. And then there's the time when we just need to take something over and redefine it. Mm -hmm. And in San Francisco, they're, they're, the mayor's office of innovation just launched something called living innovation zones. Um, I can't tell you how successful it is yet, <laughs> but the overall idea is to just designate some areas that need intervention. Um, and just relax the permit, relax all of it, mm -hmm. so that for a period of time, people who are creative can try to get at it. Mm -hmm. um, and then those places also become gathering places, or that people, people will just flow in when they know suddenly that it's free, like that mm -hmm. you can try something in a place. Whereas when it's designated to be something, it, unless it's, you know, unless you can, you can be intimidated to try to imagine it into something different. We remember those places at the, at the, not just the Republican, but the Democratic conventions too, where they had free speech zones. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yes. That's where all the protesters were herded over there. Yeah, because then, and then you're isolating them. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, but I think this question of what has happened to our public space and is it actually private space yeah. um, is, is a really good, a good question. Good and do city planners have a responsibility to even think about this? Mm -hmm. And just to say, Union Square was designed as a place for the unions, the unions. to actually gather and, and, um, and, you know, and pr protest or, or, or you know, gather for their demands. And um, that's gone out the window, for sure. <laughs> yeah. 